As of today, 100 years ago, when the British were administering Australia, they subjected the indigenous people to inhumane atrocities. They used to take away their children from tribal mothers. This movie is based on a true incident in the life of an indigenous girl. This story will teach how to fight against the challenges in life. If you have lost the courage to fight against your life, then watch this video once. And if you are new to our channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel to watch new videos before everyone else. So, without further ado, let's dive into the main story. This indigenous girl's name was Molly. She lived in an indigenous village named Jigalong in Western Australia, along with her mother and grandmother. While her mother was indigenous, but her father was a British. That time, British men engaged in illicit relationships with the indigenous girls, and the children born from such relationships were referred to as half-caste child. Molly's father worked on building fences, a type of barbed wire. However, her dad did not keep their whereabouts. During that time, Australia was abundant with rabbits and kangaroos, and these animals used to destroy crops. Therefore, the British government installed barbed wire fences throughout Australia to stop them. During this time, around the 1930s, British government made a law for the Australian Aborigines. And according to this law, British had rights over the tribals, they could do whatever they wanted with the tribals. According to this law, a British officer named Neville, he was entrusted with the task of overseeing the indigenous people. Under Neville's supervision, children of mixed heritage known as half-caste children, they were forcibly taken from indigenous villages to their camp. The term referred to children whose mothers were indigenous, but fathers were British. And Molly's mother was also an aboriginal, and her father was a British. Then one day, Molly was spotted by two police officers who were secretly observing her. Molly had a younger sister named Daisy, who was only eight years old. Additionally, there was Molly's cousin Gracie, as well. They three sisters were half-caste child. Having observed Molly and her two sisters, the police officers informed Neville about them. Afterward, Neville gives the order to take Molly and her two sisters, bringing them to the camp. Molly's mother and grandmother tried to resist the police but were unable to stop them. Witnessing the distressing act of taking away their children, Molly's mother and grandmother felt immense sorrow. However, there was no remorse on the part of the British authorities regarding their actions. Molly and her sisters were taken from the Jigalong village, approximately 1,200 miles away, to a camp named the Moore River Native Settlement. Here, there were many other children like Molly, they all were half-caste children. The Christian missionaries at this camp taught the children various tasks such as farming and other practical skills. After learning these skills, the half-caste children were employed to work in the homes of the British. As these children grew older, they were often married off to British individuals. Mr. Neville, he believed that after three generations, when these half-caste individuals married British people, and their children, in turn married British individuals, the blood and cells of the half-caste children would completely transform, eventually, they would no longer retain their indigenous features. In this way, gradually, they wanted to completely erase all indigenous races in Australia. For this reason, Neville took half-caste children from various indigenous villages. However, they never considered what these children or their mothers might be going through emotionally. Later, Mr. Neville is seen, he is visiting the camp and examining the color of Molly's skin. However, he does not notice any change in the color of Molly's skin. Here, the indigenous children whose skin color changes after being taken to the camp, they are not allowed to do any work at home, they are sent to school and allowed to stay with the British people. Later, we can see that Molly and her sisters couldn't understand anything about the camp's rules. They were forced to speak English language, and they are even told that they will never be able to return to their mothers. After staying like this for a few days, Molly and her sisters become upset. Meanwhile, a girl ran away from the camp, but she was found and brought back to the camp, and severely punished her. On the other hand, Molly decides that she will run away from the camp with her sisters, because, she hasn't seen her mother for a long time, and she doesn't like this place at all. One day, when all the children went to the church for prayers, Molly takes her sisters and run away from the camp. Regardless, Molly doesn't know how she will reach her village, she only knows that her village is to the north direction, and it is approximately 1,000 miles away from that place. However, without worrying about all that, Molly leaves the camp with her sisters, following the forest road heading north. On the other hand, 
No one in the camp is aware that Molly and her sisters have left. Late at night, when their teacher comes to take attendance at the camp, they realize that Molly and her sisters have been missing the entire day. At that time, the information about Molly and her sisters leaving is conveyed to the camp's tracker. His name was Mudu. This man is an expert in searching for missing children. When any child ran away from the camp, he searches for them and brings them back to the camp. Next, Mudu is seen with his horse, he sets out to find Molly and her sisters. He follows the footprints, and tracking the children with determination. However, even after two days, he could not find Molly and her sisters. Molly knew that the tracker would come to search for them, so she remained very cautious. However, the tracker was aware that he was on the right way. Meanwhile, after two days of walking, Molly and her sisters reach a small river bank. Meanwhile, Tracker also came to the river bank to look for them. Right at that moment, Molly realizes that Tracker is somewhere nearby. So, she quickly takes her sisters and hides in a thicket. Due to this, Tracker cannot find them. After that, when Tracker leaves the area, Molly again continues forward with her sisters. They have been walking for about two days since they ran away from the camp. During these two days, they have been walking continuously without eating anything. Suddenly, Molly saw two men in front of them, and they are also indigenous like Molly. Upon seeing the attire of Molly and her sisters, they understand that Molly and her sisters escaped from the camp and came here. The two individuals inform them that when they were hunting animals by the riverbank, they also saw Tracker there. One of them tells Molly, Tracker is very clever, and he has managed to find all the children who have escaped the camp so far. Then he asks Molly, where are you going now? Molly replies that they are heading to Jigalong. Upon hearing this, the man is surprised and he tells Molly that Jigalong is quite far from here, it will take you many days to reach there. Saying this, he gives Molly a piece of meat and also provides a matches box, so that she can burn the meat and eats it. On the other hand, it turns out that Mr. Neville has found out about Molly and her sister's escape, and he takes all measures to find them. On the other side, at the edge of a river, Tracker can no longer find the footprints of Molly and her sisters. Molly and her sisters escape from the camp. This news also reached Molly's mom. She is very happy to know this, because, she wants her daughters back. Later, Molly is seen, she is stealing chicken eggs from someone's house, because they three sisters haven't eaten anything for a long time. Suddenly, the owner of the house arrives, but the respectable lady doesn't say anything to Molly about the theft, instead, she gives her some food and clothes to wear. The respectable lady advises Molly to be cautious of the boys in the area. They have gone to hunt rabbits towards the fence. Hearing this, Molly asks the respectable lady, rabbit-proof fence? The lady replies, yes. Then Molly inquires about the direction of the rabbit-proof fence, and she is informed that it is in the east. After that, Molly starts moving towards the fence with her sisters. Molly knows that if they follow the fence, they will reach their village. On the other hand, Mr. Neville receives information that four days ago, Molly and her sisters were seen near a fence in a village. Upon hearing this, Mr. Neville understands that with the help of the fence, Molly will reach her village, so, he examines the map and calculates that in a few days, Molly and her sisters will reach a tea point. Based on this calculation, Mr. Neville has already sent a police officer to that tea point, along with the tracker man. As soon as Molly and her sisters reach that tea point, they will be caught again and brought back to the camp. Later, it is seen that Molly's younger sister has become tired of walking, her feet are sore, so she can no longer walk. But Molly doesn't want to give up, she lifts her sister on her back and continues to walk forward. After walking for some time, Molly sees a British man. The British man was a very kind person. He offers some food to Molly and her sisters. He asks, are you heading west? Molly replies, no, we are heading north, we are going to the Jigalong village. The man then says, but the fence you are following, it goes west. Upon hearing the words from the man, Molly realizes that they have come the wrong way. She asks the man, are there two rabbit-proof fences here? The man replies, not two, there are three rabbit-proof fences here. And then the man tells Molly, if you want to follow the rabbit-proof fence to the north, it will take you a lot of time to reach Jigalong. Then the British man suggests a shortcut and mentions that if they take that shortcut road, then they will have to walk a hundred miles less. After that, the three of them start walking on the road shown by the man. The next day, in the morning, they reach the rabbit-proof fence again. 
Knowing that Tracker is following them, Molly lifts her sisters onto her back, so that their footprints do not touch the ground. Walking carefully on the stones, they go a long way. This time, even Tracker is amazed, he is astonished by the intelligence of this little girl. On the other hand, Mr. Neville spreads a false rumor that Molly's mother has gone to Willuna. To divert Molly and her sisters, he wants them to go towards Willuna. Meanwhile, Molly and her sisters are still walking, they still had a long way to go. After walking for a while, they encounter a man. The man offers them some food, and the man also tells Gracie that her mother is waiting for her in Willuna, and she can take a train to reach her. Upon hearing this, Molly stands up, and firmly tells Gracie that the man is lying. Molly urges Gracie to leave with her, stating that they should move on from there, but Gracie refuses to go with Molly. After that, Molly lifts her younger sister on her back and moves on from there. Gracie stayed there with that man. Molly had left Gracie behind, but she thought it wasn't right to leave her alone, so, she goes back there again and watches Gracie from a distance. She sees, Gracie waiting at a railway station. Molly signals Gracie to come to her. Then Gracie was getting up from the bench and heading towards Molly, at that precise moment, Neville's group arrived in a car and apprehended Gracie. Both Molly and her younger sister observed everything from a distance, but they were unable to take any action. Here is also seen the man who had given them food a little while ago, that guy helped Neville's people capture Gracie for some money. Afterwards, Molly and her younger sister set off for their village. On the other hand, Mr. Neville had kept his men at Tea Point. Even after 21 days, Molly and her sister did not reach there, the reason being, they had taken a shortcut. Later, the officer instructs the tracker to gather belongings and tells that they won't wait there anymore. On the other side, Mr. Neville then writes a letter to the in charge of Jigalong Village. In the letter, he mentions that Molly and her sister will reach Jigalong in a few days. As soon as Molly and her sister reach the village, they bring them back to their camp. On the other side, Molly and her sister were both exhausted from walking. There was no water, no food. In this situation, they couldn't continue walking. They eventually became unconscious and fell to the ground. After a while, Molly regained consciousness upon hearing the screech of an eagle. Then Molly again lifted her sister on her back, and they resumed their journey towards the north fence. On the other side, it is seen that in Jigalong, a police officer has reached to catch Molly and her sister. But Molly knew nothing about this. It then turns out that the man sent by Neville, he realizes that Molly is about to arrive in the village, so, he goes into the forest to search for them. However, Molly's mother and grandmother were standing there. Molly's mother had a spear in her hand, which they used for hunting. Molly's mother advances with the spear towards the officer to attack him. Seeing this, the officer gets frightened and retreats from there. After a while, Molly's mother catches sight of Molly and her little sister. Filled with joy, Molly's mother rushes towards them, embracing them tightly. Molly then tells her mother that they couldn't save Gracie. Then, Molly's mother and grandmother decide not to return to Jigalong village, because, they knew that if they go back, Neville's men will capture Molly and her sister again. On the other side, due to a lack of funds, Neville's team had given up searching for Molly and her sister. From the British camp named Moore River Native Settlement, Molly and her sister continued walking to return to their village for two months. During these two months, they walked approximately 2,500 kilometers. At the end of the movie, we see the real Molly and Daisy, they are old now. Molly states that after that incident, they never found Gracie again. At that time, in Australia, every tribal had to endure such hardships. However, Molly managed to break free from that imprisoned life for her bravery. At a young age, when the right search to return home wasn't available to her, Molly and her two sisters still managed to navigate the challenging journey back home. Molly managed to break free from that imprisoned life for her bravery, she had come back to her mom. Truly, her courage is admirable to us, it inspires courage in us. So, how did you feel after watching this movie? If you were in Molly's place, could you have made it back from that camp? Please comment and let me know. I hope, you enjoyed today's video. As always, whether you like it or not, please leave a like, because it inspires us to do another video soon. If the video truly moved you, please share it with at least 2 or 3 friends, and, of course subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. Because this is not the last video, more videos are on the way. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video. Thank you.
Thank you so much.